The two collisions that Schofield had with two soldiers were unplanned in 1917. George McKay just continued running. The rule on set was to keep acting no matter what until director Sam Mendes said cut. Actor James Earl Jones, who voiced Darth Vader in Star Wars, was uncredited for the first two movies, saying that he considered David Prowse, the actor in the suit, to be giving the more defining performance. For his role as Magneto in X-Men, Ian McKellen was worried about his physique for the role, as in the comics, the character is drawn with huge muscles. McKellen requested a false muscle suit in order to make himself look more like his comic counterpart. For 1917, director Sam Mendes was able to persuade many of the stars in the supporting cast to appear in small roles on the condition that they would not be asked to promote the film when it was released. Actor Tom Holland revealed he had five auditions for the role of Finn in Star Wars The Force Awakens. He said he messed up one audition as someone was making bleep bleep noises impersonating the robot BB-8, and he couldn't take it seriously and just kept laughing. Director Ridley Scott had an extensive background studying art before becoming a filmmaker. He had created very detailed storyboards for Alien, in order to attempt to increase the film's budget. Once 20th Century Fox saw the storyboards that Scott had created, they increased the film's budget from around $4.2 million to $8 million, though Scott had originally hoped to get the budget to about $20 million. Johnny Depp was set to reprise his role as Gellert Grindelwald in The Secrets of Dumbledore before Warner Brothers asked him to step down. Depp reportedly did one day of filming before leaving production. The actor's contract, however, was pay or play, so Depp was paid his full salary despite only filming for a single day. Will Poulter had originally been cast as Pennywise in It before having to drop out due to scheduling conflicts. Producers then reportedly auditioned both Bill Skarsgård and Hugo Weaving for the role. Bill Skarsgård was ultimately cast in the role due to his ability to convey both the playfulness and the creepiness of the character. When Ricky Gervais was asked if the UK office or the US office was better, he said the following, I thought the British office was the best, but my accountant assures me it's the American. Sorry, oh. mate. Oh, sorry, mate. Excuse oh. me. <laughs> <What are you? laughs> In episode 2 of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Tamaru Morrison has a cameo as a homeless clone trooper. Notably, this is the first time Morrison wore clone trooper armour, as in Revenge of the Sith, all clone troopers were completely computer-generated. Actress Charlotte Rampling, who plays the Reverend Mother in Dune, dubbed herself for the French version of the film, as she is fluent in French. After the success of Elf, Will Ferrell was reportedly offered $29 million to return for the sequel. However, the actor turned this down in fear of the movie turning out bad. Ferrell didn't want to be associated with a bad sequel that could tarnish the reputation of the original film. Director James Gunn revealed to a fan on Twitter that the upcoming shorts, I Am Groot on Disney+, Plus are just for fun and not necessarily canon to the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise or other Marvel Studios projects. After finishing the movie Logan, Patrick Stewart said he would not play the role of Charles Xavier again, stating he thought it was the right time to leave the role. However, five years later, the actor has returned to reprise the role, playing an alternate version of the character in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Disney Plus currently has the biggest viewership debut on the streaming platform. There has been no official confirmation yet, but it has been suggested that this will lead to a second season, despite the show originally being announced as a limited series. Ewan McGregor has stated that he thinks there's more to tell and is happy to reprise the role again in the future. During the filming of the Hobbit trilogy, no height manipulation tricks were used between Bilbo and the dwarves, as the height of the actors matched the relative heights of the characters. Ian McKellen would have to sit on set alone to record his scenes, 
and was added in later to make Gandalf appear much taller than the dwarves and Bilbo. In Inception, the role of Saito was exclusively written for the actor Ken Watanabe. Christopher Nolan had worked with him on Batman Begins, though the actor didn't have much screen time. Nolan wanted to give the actor a more prominent role in another movie. Michael Caine returned to work with his longtime collaborator Christopher Nolan in a small role on the movie Tenet. Caine was not able to read the full screenplay and was only given the scene that featured his character. Caine revealed that he had no idea what the film was about or what genre it would be. Matt Damon was initially offered the role of Jake Sully in Avatar by director James Cameron. Cameron revealed he didn't need a Hollywood star for the lead role, but was willing to offer Damon 10% of the film's gross. Had Damon starred in the movie and it grossed the same, the actor would have been paid around $250 million. When reintroducing Kingpin to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Hawkeye, the producers considered doing a heavier set Kingpin, and Vincent D'Onofrio would have been using a fat suit in order to achieve this. However, they decided against this as it broke the continuity of his appearance in Daredevil. During The Matrix, there is a shot of the reflection in a doorknob. To hide the camera, they covered it in a coat and tie in order to match what Morpheus was wearing. In The Muppet Christmas Carol, during the song Thankful Heart, the characters can be seen walking past a shop called Micklewhites. Micklewhite is actually the real surname of actor Michael Caine. Michael Caine is only his stage name. His real name is Morris Micklewhite. For his role in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, actor Robert Patrick learned to fire a gun without blinking. As the T-1000 wouldn't blink when firing a gun, he made sure he didn't either. In order to convince Millie Bobby Brown to cut her hair for the role of Eleven in Stranger Things, Matt and Ross Duffer showed the actress pictures of Charlize Theron in Mad Max Fury Road to show her how cool it would be to have short hair. Shout out to Bruna for suggesting I cover Stranger Things on this channel. When filming The Rock on Alcatraz, Sean Connery didn't want to make the journey by boat twice a day to and from the island prison, so he insisted that he have a cabin built on the island where he could live during filming. The producers obliged this request. A few well-known actors were considered for the role of Aragorn in The Lord of the Rings. First, director Peter Jackson tried to cast Daniel Day-Lewis, but he turned it down multiple times. Vin Diesel, Russell Crowe and Nicolas Cage all auditioned for the role. Actor Stuart Townsend was cast and worked a couple of days before being let go due to his age being too close to the Hobbits and they wanted an actor a bit older. Viggo Mortensen was then cast last minute and took the role as his son was a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings novels. In The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, the orc leader Gothmog's appearance was based on now disgraced film producer Harvey Weinstein. Miramax, Harvey Weinstein's producing company, were involved in the Lord of the Rings production and at the start had originally wanted Peter Jackson to make the trilogy as one movie. Peter Jackson allegedly hated working with Harvey Weinstein and made the orc look like the producer as a dig at him. Christian Bale revealed that he shot scenes in a Thor Love and Thunder with Peter Dinklage and Jeff Goldblum. However, both scenes were cut from the movie. Dinklage had previously appeared in Avengers Affinity War as Ettry the Dwarf, and Jeff Goldblum appeared in Thor Ragnarok as the Grand Master. Actor Miles Teller portrays Goose's son, Bradley Bradshaw, in Top Gun Maverick, who appeared as a child in the first movie. Despite this, actor Miles Teller hadn't been born at the time of the film's release in 1986. Until Top Gun Maverick, Actor Tom Cruise had never starred in a movie that grossed over a billion dollars at the global box office, despite being one of the biggest film stars in the world for the last 40 years. 
Did you know that for the Simpsons movie, the character Hank Scorpio from the episode You Only Move Twice was supposed to be the film's villain? This was changed as they felt he was too friendly with Homer in that episode and the character was too nice despite being a supervillain. Ultimately, Scorpio was replaced by the character Russ Cargill. Both characters, however, are voiced by Albert Brooks. Gary Oldman had initially been cast as the voice of General Grievous in Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. However, Oldman was forced to drop out when it was revealed the movie was using actors not associated with the Screen Actors Guild. Director James Cameron allegedly pitched Aliens to the studio by writing the word Alien on a whiteboard. He then added the S on the end, and then added two lines making the S a dollar symbol. Before casting Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One in Doctor Strange, Marvel considered actors Morgan Freeman, Bill Nye, and Ken Watanabe for the role. Marvel producer Kevin Feige later revealed it was a mistake whitewashing the Ancient One when they cast Tilda Swinton. Before being cast as Saruman in The Lord of the Rings, actor Christopher Lee wanted to play the role of Gandalf. Lee had read the books every year since they were published. Lee was also the only member of the cast of The Lord of the Rings to meet the author J.R.R. Tolkien. Lee bumped into the author in a pub in Oxford. Marvel Studios and Disney Plus released the first two episodes of Miss Marvel in theatres in Pakistan as a way to celebrate the hero's roots. The inclusion of Michael Keaton's vulture in the movie Morbius did not come from Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios. The inclusion was a decision solely made by Sony. This was revealed by the film's director, Daniel Espanoza. Did you know that Spider-Man No Way Home wasn't originally going to be a multiverse movie? The initial plan was to do Spider-Man vs Kraven the Hunter. Tom Holland had said he would love to see Jason Momoa play the role of Kraven. However, Sony have now gone and done a spin-off of the Craven character, with Aaron Taylor Johnson playing the role. This movie will be in the vein of Venom and Morbius. In The Nice Guys, actor Robert Downey Jr. actually has an uncredited cameo in the movie. Downey plays the murdered porno producer Sid Shattuck, who is found by Ryan Gosling's Holland March when he falls off the edge of the balcony at the party. <laughs> Sherlock creators Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss reportedly cast actor Benedict Cumberbatch after seeing him in the movie Atonement. They thought he looked like the perfect Sherlock Holmes. Actresses Kristen Bell and Idina Mazel both auditioned for the role of Rapunzel in Tangled, but lost out to Mandy Moore. Three years later, they both went on to star together in Frozen as Anna and Elsa. That one's for you, Jordan. During the filming of The Revenant, only natural light was used to shoot the scenes and production only shot for around one hour a day in order to use the best light. One scene did use artificial lights as wind was causing the campfire to blow in unpredictable directions, thus ruining the lighting in the shot. Henry Cavill revealed he got into the best shape of his life in order to play Geralt of Rivia in the Netflix series The Witcher. Cavill's muscles were so big they kept wearing down the leather on his costume and required replacement several times. The character of Cad Bane was first introduced in the Clone Wars animated series and was a homage to Lee Van Cleef's character Angel Eyes from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. The character has made his live-action debut in The Book of Boba Fett, facing off in a duel with Timothy Oliphant's Cobb Vanth. The scene is another homage to the westerns that inspired some of the iconography of the Star Wars franchise. Christian Bale shaved his head for the role of Gore the God Butcher in Thor Love and Thunder. However, when the actor was required to do reshoots much later, he was unable to shave his head again 
as he was working on other projects at the time. Bale wore a bald cap in order to do the reshoots. Before Sam Neill was cast as Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park, director Steven Spielberg revealed that he had approached Harrison Ford for the role. For unknown reasons, the actor turned it down. Cinematographer Roger Deakins was initially set to be the director of photography for Dune, having worked with Denis Villeneuve on the previous movie, Blade Runner 2049. However, due to scheduling conflicts with his work on 1917, Deakins was unavailable and was replaced by Greg Frazier. Notably, Deakins went on to win the Academy Award for Best Cinematography for his work on 1917, and Frazier went to win the Academy Award for Best Cinematography for his work on Dune the following year. Actor Liam Neeson said he was up for returning to Star Wars but wanted to do a movie. He said that he is a bit of a snob when it comes to TV. He ultimately cameoed in the last episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and he did state he didn't want anyone else playing the role of Qui-Gon Jinn. Did you know that in Rogue One, the planet Scarif was named by a Starbucks barista who misheard Gareth Edwards' name as Scarif? Gareth Edwards was amused by this and decided to name the planet after what the Starbucks barista wrote on his cup. In Mad Max Fury Road, over 80% of the effects seen in the film are practical, including stunts, makeup and sets. CGI was used sparingly, according to the film's director, George Miller. Special effects were mainly used to enhance the Namibian landscape, remove stunt rigging and Furiosa's arm. Actor Val Kilmer reprises his role as Iceman in Top Gun Maverick. However, due to health reasons, Kilmer has lost the ability to speak. Artificial intelligence software analysed audio from other movies that the actor starred in, and they were able to recreate the actor's voice for his role in this movie. When Zachary Levi auditioned for the part of Flynn Rider in Tangled, he actually used an English accent. However, when production started, he dropped the English accent and read it in his natural American accent. The popularity of the miniseries Chernobyl actually led to around a 40% increase in tourism to both Chernobyl and the city of Pripyat during the following months of the show's premiere on HBO. In order to prepare for the reprisal of the role of Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, actor Hayden Christensen binged watched the Clone Wars animated series. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Before being cast as Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch was approached to play the villain in Thor The Dark World, the Dark Elf Malekith. Christopher Eccleston was ultimately cast in the role. Cumberbatch said he was waiting for something far more juicy. For Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, George Lucas had originally intended to have Mace Windu killed off during Order 66 by a young Boba Fett as vengeance for Mace killing Jango in Attack of the Clones. Lucas allegedly changed this because he didn't think a young teenage Boba Fett would be skilled enough to kill a Jedi Master. Director Christopher Nolan has said that the snow-based third-level dream was inspired from the set piece from On Her Majesty's Secret Service. This is Christopher Nolan's favourite James Bond film. Originally in Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Star Wars character Jar Jar Binks was going to appear. However, the producers were unable to get permission from Lucasfilm to use the character. Ultimately, they used Ugly Sonic instead, the original design of Sonic from the latest movies, which faced huge backlash from fans. During the filming of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Bob Hoskins acted on his own and had to imagine the animated characters in the scenes with him. Hoskins revealed that after filming, he started to hallucinate cartoon characters. Really? Long time no see. Mads Mikkelsen revealed that he auditioned for the role of Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, in the 2005 version of Fantastic Four. However, he walked out of the audition after he was told to pretend to extend his arms like a rubber man. In The Incredibles, when Mr. Incredible says, Fly home, buddy, I work alone. 
Bon Voyage is present. However, when Syndrome recalls the event later, Bon Voyage is not present, and this shows Syndrome's warped perspective of what happened, showing he took it far more personally than it was originally intended. Fly home, buddy. I work alone. Fly home, buddy. I work alone. During his cameo in X-Men First Class, Hugh Jackman filmed eight takes. The first seven takes, he said the scripted line, F off. For the eighth take, he improvised the line, go F yourself. This was the take used in the final movie. With the release of Minions Rise of Gru, a TikTok trend called Gentle Minions has appeared over the social media platform. The trend has people showing up to the cinema in suits to watch the movie. Some cinemas have taken action by banning people wearing suits from attending the screenings. During the filming of Armageddon, actor Ben Affleck asked the film's director, Michael Bay, why was it easier to train oil drillers to become astronauts than to train astronauts to become oil drillers? Michael Bay simply told Affleck to shut the f*** up. For the movie Solo, A Star Wars Story, original Darth Maul voice actor Peter Serafinowicz actually came back to record the dialogue for the role of Darth Maul. Serafinowicz also revealed that him and director Ron Howard spoke more about the Darth Maul character than George Lucas had spoken to him for Star Wars Episode One. The only note Lucas gave Serafinowicz for Star Wars Episode One was just make him sound evil. Eventually, actor Sam Witwer, who voices Darth Maul in the Clone Wars series, recorded the lines, and these were used in the final film. They felt this matched the continuity of the Star Wars universe far better. We will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. In The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, the Witch King of Angmar originally had a different design, and the original Eowyn vs. the Witch King fight was shot with this costume. If you've played the Lord of the Rings Return of the King video game, during the mission Pelennor Fields, the end of the mission shows Eowyn defeating the Witch King, which features the original design that ended up not being used in the movie. Creator of the show Chernobyl, Craig Mazin, had originally intended for the actors to speak with Russian accents. However, he abandoned this idea during the audition process, as the accents were becoming a distraction for many of the actors. Before Brian Cranston was cast as Walter White in Breaking Bad, both John Cusack and Matthew Broderick were considered for the role. Initially, producers couldn't see past Brian Cranston's role as Hal from Malcolm in the Middle, not believing he could do a role this serious. Hugh Jackman almost didn't get cast as Wolverine, according to the X-Men film writer David Hayter. The studio thought the actor was too nice, too tall, and too handsome. They didn't see him as the character Wolverine. Traditionally, in the comics, Wolverine is only 5 feet 3 inches tall. Jackman is 6 feet 2 inches tall. According to reports, John Krasinski was not the first choice to play Reed Richards in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. James Bond actor Daniel Craig was reportedly cast in the role but dropped out of production as he didn't want to risk getting COVID and taking it back to his family. However, there are conflicting reports that he would have played the half-brother of Thor, Balder the Brave. Interestingly, Daniel Craig was considered for the role of Thor in the first movie back in 2011. During the filming of Darkest Hour, Gary Oldman smoked over 400 cigars which were Romeo Y. Ulita Cubans which were the favourite of Winston Churchill. Production spent £30,000 on these cigars for the use in the movie. The excessive smoking led to nicotine poisoning, and Gary Oldman ended up in hospital. Did you know that for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino cast the two leads, Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, as pairs? The film starred Leonardo DiCaprio as Rick Dalton and Brad Pitt as Cliff Booth. Tarantino revealed that had either actor not starred in the film, neither of them would. His second choice for Cliff Booth has revealed to be Tom Cruise. However, we don't know which actor would have played Rick Dalton opposite Tom Cruise's Cliff Booth. 
The naked sketch that Jack does of Rose in Titanic was actually drawn by the film's director, James Cameron. Director Sam Raimi revealed that the organic web shooters in his Spider-Man movies got a lot of backlash. Originally, Peter was going to have homemade web shooters like in the comics, though Raimi didn't think it was believable that a teenager could invent that technology. For his role in Castaway, actor Tom Hanks needed to transform his body to that which would resemble someone who had been stranded on a desert island for years. The first part of the movie was shot with Hanks at his normal weight. Filming was then paused for a year, and Hanks lost 50 pounds and grew out his hair and beard. In the movie Jack Reacher, the titular character is played by Tom Cruise, who stands at 5 foot 4 inches tall. In the novels by Lee Child, the character is described as 6 foot 5 inches tall and weighing 250 pounds. In X-Men, Magneto and Professor X are seen playing chess. However, neither Ian McKellen or Patrick Stewart knew how to play the game before filming the movie. Ultimately, a chess consultant was hired to make sure they looked like seasoned players when making moves. Before being cast as DJ in The Last Jedi, Benicio Del Toro had originally been cast as Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace. After George Lucas cut most of Maul's dialogue, Del Toro dropped out of the movie. Darth Maul ended up being played by Ray Park and voiced by Peter Serafinowicz. Director Brad Bird pitched his idea of the Iron Giant to the studio with the sentence, What if a gun had a soul and didn't want to be a gun? Did you know that for his role as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, Actor Anthony Hopkins based his voice on the ship's computer HAL from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Good morning. The producers of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness have revealed that they scanned Elizabeth Olsen's eye and used it to create the giant Gargantos eye in order to foreshadow that it was under Scarlet Witch's control. Actress Elizabeth Olsen has stated that she doesn't consider Scarlet Witch the villain of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. She said, I will never think of her as the baddie. She learns her lesson. She's just processing big emotions. James Gunn had initially wanted Dave Bautista to play the role of Peacemaker in The Suicide Squad. However, the actor dropped out in order to star in Army of the Dead, directed by Zack Snyder. John Cena went on to be cast as Peacemaker in the movie instead. In order to show Spider-Man No Way Home in China, Marvel Studios and Sony were asked to remove the Statue of Liberty from the movie by the Chinese censors. The studios declined this and the film ended up not being released in China. In The Office, there was a story arc pitched by the writers of having Jim cheat on Pam. However, actor John Krasinski put his foot down on this story going ahead. Krasinski said he would not shoot those scenes as he didn't believe his character would ever cheat on Pam. Director Taika Waititi revealed the reason that they changed up the look of Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher in the movie from the comic counterpart was because he thought Gore in the comics looked too much like Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter. Oscar-winning actor Troy Kotzer helped develop the Tusken Raider sign language in both The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. The actor also played a Tusken Raider in the show. Troy Kotzer is the second deaf actor to win an Academy Award. Did you know that before casting Ray Fiennes as Lord Voldemort in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the producers considered hiring Rowan Atkinson for the villainous role? <laughs> in order to give Stranger Things an authentic 80s feel, the show's colourists added 80s style film grain to each frame of the show. This one's for you, Bruna. Before Ed Harris was cast in HBO's Westworld as the Man in Black, 
the producers of the series had approached actor Clint Eastwood for the role, however he turned this part down. According to director Sam Raimi, the original runtime for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was around 2 hours and 40 minutes. Raimi revealed that test audiences found the film originally too confusing, so a great deal was cut out and new scenes were shot to simplify the story. The girl who attempts to sell spice to Obi-Wan Kenobi in episode 2 of the Disney Plus series is Esther Rose McGregor, the real-life daughter of actor Ewan McGregor. Harrison Ford was allegedly the first choice to play the role of Oscar Schindler in Schindler's List, however the actor ended up declining the role. Ford stated that people would not be able to look past his Indiana Jones persona and may end up ignoring the importance of the film. Actor Benedict Cumberbatch actually grew out a goatee for his role in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. In the previous films he appeared in, he wore a fake goatee. Some fans have said that this was too noticeable and it limited his facial expressions. Cumberbatch said growing out a goatee this time was necessary. Director George Miller has revealed that the rapper Eminem was considered for the role of Max in Fury Road. However, Eminem didn't want to move to Australia, where they were going to film the movie at the time. Tom Hardy was ultimately cast in the lead role, and the film was shot in Namibia. Had Sam Raimi made Spider-Man 4, the director wanted to reveal that Peter's landlord, Mr. Ditkovich, was actually a retired Craven the Hunter. Ultimately, the film never got made. Jonathan Banks's Mike Ehrmantraut was only written into the series of Breaking Bad when actor Bob Odenkirk couldn't film for the episode ABQ. Originally, it would have had Sol Goodman who cleaned up the house and instructed Jesse what to do when the police arrived. It has been reported that each episode of Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series will have a budget of $50 million. This makes it the most expensive TV series ever made. Comic creator of The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman, had originally stated that he thought John Hamm would be the perfect casting for Negan. John Hamm even stated that Kirkman should give him a call about the role, hinting that he was interested. Eventually, though, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was cast instead. Did you know that in The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, despite John Rhys Davis playing Gimli the Dwarf, he is actually the tallest actor out of the nine cast members of The Fellowship. This allowed him to appear taller than The Hobbits, which is canonically accurate. However, stand-ins and doubles were used to make him appear smaller alongside the taller characters in the movie. Ethan Hawke revealed that he was asked to star in Moon Knight by Oscar Isaac. The two actors are neighbours and bumped into each other at a coffee shop, where Isaac approached Hawke to star in the Marvel Disney Plus series. The opening scene of Full Metal Jacket, where all the recruits have their heads shaved, was the last scene filmed. Stanley Kubrick made the actors shave their heads during the film, then they had to grow their hair back out to complete the rest of the movie. They were then called back to have it all shaved off again for the opening scene. This annoyed many of the actors. Frank Darabont, the original showrunner for The Walking Dead, had originally wanted actor Thomas Jane to play the role of Rick Grimes in the series. Darabont even pitched the show to HBO with Jane attached to star. HBO passed on the project and this led to Jane dropping out due to other commitments. This led to Andrew Lincoln being cast instead. Norman Reedus had originally auditioned for the role of Merle Dixon in The Walking Dead, who went on to be played by Michael Rooker. It is said that the creators were so impressed with Norman Reedus that they created the role of Daryl Dixon, Merle's younger brother, specifically for him. Christian Bale almost had to drop out of Thor Love and Thunder due to scheduling conflicts. However, Bale stated that his children made him find a way to make it work out so he could star in the movie. Before Benedict Cumberbatch was cast as Doctor Strange, both Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke were considered for the role, amongst others. 
both Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke would go on to star in Marvel Studios' Disney Plus series Moon Knight, playing Mark Spector and Arthur Harrow, respectively. While searching for child actors for Stranger Things, the Duffers ended up auditioning over 906 boys and 307 girls for the leading roles. Gaten Matarazzo, who plays Dustin, was the first of the boys to be cast in the show. Actor Tim Roth is reprising his role as Abomination, Emil Blonsky, 14 years after his first appearance as the character from The Incredible Hulk in 2008. Roth said he was surprised to be asked back, and had only done the film initially to start in something that his children could watch. The showrunners of the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power series on Amazon, have revealed that they already have planned out the five seasons of the show and know what the final shot of the series will be. In No Country for Old Men, actor Javier Bardem plays a hitman called Anton Chigurh. An independent group of psychologists have said this was the most realistic depiction of a psychopath in film ever. Director Chris Columbus had originally wanted to cast Robin Williams as Hagrid in the Harry Potter films, with Williams keen to play the role. However, J.K. Rowling had stated that she didn't want any American actors cast in key roles in the franchise. Actor Richard Harris has revealed that he only ended up taking the role of Albus Dumbledore in Harry Potter because his granddaughter said she would never speak to him again if he didn't. Director Taika Waititi has revealed there is a four-hour cut of Thor Love and Thunder, but went on to say he isn't interested in a director's cut of this movie, stating they are not good and that directors need to be controlled sometimes. Natalie Portman revealed that whole characters and planets were cut from the movie, and Christian Bale has also already revealed his shot scenes with Peter Dinklage and Jeff Goldblum, but they ended up on the cutting room floor. Before Chris Columbus was hired to direct Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Steven Spielberg had been a strong contender to direct the movie, but turned it down. J.K. Rowling had also wanted Terry Gilliam to direct the film, however Warner Brothers weren't interested in him doing the movie. In Thor Love and Thunder, Russell Crowe played the role of Zeus, the Greek god. However, he was originally going to play a comedic version of Satan instead. There is concept art of Crow as Satan for the movie. It is unknown why the role of Satan was cut, which led to Crow playing Zeus instead. <laughs>